Hi everyone, it's Allie for Art of Weeks Canada. Thanks for tuning in for another Art of Weeks Canada at home video. Our aim for this series is to bring you the best wig and crafting resources to you at home. Today I'm going to be hosting one of our most popular panels, heat styling. So rule number one for heat styling with synthetic fiber wigs is you always let it cool and that's how the shape stays. So you can heat up a wig as much as you want but the heat is only going to make the hair malleable and formable. You need to then form it into whatever it needs to be, so a spike or a curl or whatever it is, and then the way it cools is the way it stays. So that is rule number one. Two of the most important tools for styling wigs with heat are a blow dryer with a cooling function and a flat iron. The things that you really wanna pay attention to when you're picking these heat tools is not choosing anything that doesn't have a temperature dial or temperature settings. Uh, essentially, a lot of heat tools that are on the lower end will just come with these numbers that tell us uh, what the heat is. They'll relate to a number, so it'll be like temperature two or five or 30. That doesn't actually tell you what temperature you're using on your wigs and you'll risk singeing it. So I would recommend one where you can actually see, in this case, this goes all the way up to 210 Celsius. So I like to be able to change that knob right to the middle setting and then I know I'm not gonna hurt my wigs at all. If you're going to curl a wig, you don't actually have to use the curling iron the same way you normally would for human hair. So I don't even plug it in. I actually just use it as a cold barrel for me to style around. Again, the number one rule is that a style will stay the way that it's cooled, not the way it's heated. So if I have hot hair, I can wrap it around any shape and it'll stay that way. This also works for crimping tools and anything that's the right size of curl that you want. You can use a pencil or a Sharpie marker if you want a really tight ringlet, or you can use a different type of curling iron barrel. So today I'm going to be working with a classic fibered wig. So we recommend using our classic fiber for any heat styling because it takes heat up to 420 degrees and it'll hold it a lot nicer in the long run. If you're using our silky fiber, you're gonna end up with possibly a little bit harder of a time to keep your curls in place or your styling in place because it really just wants to be however it was made, whether that's straight and long and silky or curly and silky, it'll always kind of wanna go back to that. Classic, however, is fair game for styling. This wig is a custom dyed grease, so that's why it's lost a lot of its curl. It's because it has actually gone through boiling water to be dyed. Um, so you can use water to relax the curls from a wig, boiling water, uh, or you can use it to curl a wig by putting the hair into foam rollers and dipping it into the boiling water. This is not my favorite method because it does require you to know exactly what the temperature of your boiling water is at all times and you have a lot less control over it than if you're using a heat tool. Especially if you've curled it all up and then you boil it and you let all the curls out and you realize they're not the size you wanted or they're not laying the right direction. With heat, you can immediately attend to that. So when I'm curling or straightening any pieces of hair, I only go in small chunks. So I'm using about an inch of hair here, maybe even an inch and a quarter, and now I will demonstrate the curl. So you're gonna wanna have your curling iron not plugged in on hand. Uh, I say that because I am going to be touching it with my hand. If this was plugged in, we would have a big hazard. And then we also need our flat iron tool. So we're gonna grab that small chunk of hair. And we're going to heat it up. And now we wait. I like to use a little bit of the Got To Be Glued Blasting Free Spray. So now that we've curled the piece, I'm actually going to now straighten that hair. So the first thing I wanna do anytime I'm gonna straighten a wig is if it's curly, you brush out the curls because even though it's been heat set and when you first get your wig, it's been heat set, a little brush does help loosen the curl a little bit and it'll help you just in the long run. Again, when I'm straightening, I like to use little chunks just so that I'm not pulling too much under the flat iron or too much under the curling iron. I'm gonna put 
a brush up here and gently hold the hair down like this. And then I'm gonna get my flat iron right above it and gently pull down. One of the questions that we received for this panel is how to move the part on one of our wigs that have a skin top on the inside. So the skin top means that we've got a nice fake little hairline mimicked right here that makes it look a little bit more realistic than a regular hard front wig, but a little bit less than a lace front wig. Because the section of skin goes from here to here, we can actually move the part to the side. So I like to work in little chunks. So we're gonna have it over here. I'm just gonna decide where I want it first. If you just pull it over like this, you will risk it wanting to slide back to the place where it actually was once. Because the wig came that way, it was heat set that way. So we're gonna just, in small sections, heat train it to go this way. I'm gonna put one clip here so that I know where my part starts. And I'm gonna have one more clip over here so that I can take that hair over and clip it down. So let's start with little bits. I'm gonna use the hair dryer. And then I'm gonna cool it down with the cooling function. So just like that. If you want to add a little bit of the Got To Be Glued Blasting Freeze Spray, you can do so right here. Smooth it and clip it down here. Now I'm going to do that for every layer until we reach the other clip. Now we're gonna do one of my favorite things to do with wigs, spiking. So I'm using a Jaguar today. Jaguar does have a teased top, so it's really ideal for pulling hair up into spikes. The most important thing you do even before you start tackling your spiked wig is the planning. So I like to take a 360 turn of my character or a ton of reference photos, and I assign every spike on the character's head to a color or a number or some sort of system that works for me so that I can have a glossary of every single time you turn the head where the spike sits. Uh, there's a lot of characters who it might look like their spike is sticking out the side, but it's actually tilted backwards as well. So it's really important to pay attention to your reference photos. So one really helpful tool for when you are doing this is tiny little hair ties coming clear and black. Um, and it's just so that you can sort of mentally decide where all your spikes are going to be by using little ponytails. Um, this is really good for planning because you can see if the wig actually does have as much hair as you want for the spikes or if you need to sew in some extra wefts. Another thing that this does is show you if the hair is too long for that spike. Let's say I wanted the spike to be as long as the shortest bit of hair here. It means that I'm going to have to get rid of this before I start spiking. Otherwise, I'm going to create the spike. It's going to be too big and too long. Then I'll chop off the end and you're gonna get a weird jagged edge. Once you've used the Got To Be products on it, it's just gonna look really bad. So you wanna do it beforehand. One of my favorite methods for just cutting off little bits of hair is to either go down or up against it. I'm gonna go downwards and against it because it does give it a little bit of a tease while also eliminating that tip of hair. Now when I hold up the spike, I'm seeing it a lot more as the size I want it to be in the end. 
So once we have sectioned off the hair that we want to use, one method that I really like using is the bullseye method. So say if you're looking down at the spike, it's a circle. You're going to find the center of the bullseye, so right in the middle, the core of the spike. And you're going to tease that first. This definitely doesn't need to be pretty. It just needs to hold up the strength of the spike. I press the flat iron on it, heat that up really good, and I cool it down with the Got To Be Glue Blasting Free Spray. Now keep in mind, don't go too close when you're using this, especially on darker colors because you're gonna get what we call snow, which is all the little specks of white. You wanna stay a little bit further away. While you're regathering all the hair that goes around the spike, you want to tease just the inside, making sure that you don't push the comb too far through because you don't want to make the spike super messy. Now I turn the blow dryer on the spike. And the cooling function. finding that the end of the spike is still, still a little bit too high, so before it gets too glued or anything, I'm just gonna trim off a little bit more on the end. Spray it. And one of the questions that we got was how to keep the tips of your spike clean and together. So I'm gonna spray it a little bit more, but then I am gonna use the Got To Be Glued Spiking Gel. Uh, whenever I use this product, I like to have a little Tupperware container or bucket around of water because it does get your hands very sticky very quick. So I just gently touch it on my fingertips and then I scoop up on the end. This is a really cool product. It's a little bit less harsh than actual glue, but some people do use tacky glue or any other type of really nice glue here. I just find that this is much less harsh and it can be washed out later. So another question we got was actually um, what to do if you've used tacky glue uh, in your spikes and unfortunately because it's a very strong hold of glue it's very difficult to get out but when you're washing our wigs you can do so in lukewarm water with dish soap and that's the best way you can wash any sort of glue or hairspray out of the wigs. Now I'm going to do the same thing by heat activating this so I'm going to heat it up and cool it down again. If you want to keep your spike nice and strong, the best thing you can do is just pile on that got to be and keep using the hot to cold method. So I heat it up and then I cool it down. Heat it up, cool it down. I almost call this shocking the wig, so you make it really hot and then you make it really cold really quick. So that's a really good method. Thank you so much for tuning in for this Art of Wigs Canada at Home video. Uh, our next one will be Wig Rescue, where I'll teach you how to fix even the worst of wig disasters. Thank you so much.